but for some reason I really wasn't connecting with God. And so one thing that I do when I'm not totally connecting is I look at videos of outer space. I love it so much. And I was like sitting there on TikTok just scrolling of like nebulas and beautiful planets. And I was just praying to God and I was like, wow, God, you're, you're so incredible. God, you literally formed a planet that's a diamond. God, you formed the Milky Way. And God, you know how many hairs are on my head. You perfectly crafted my fingerprint. Wow. And it brought me to Psalm 148. Wow. It says that in all creation, it all worships God perfectly. Everything. The lightning, the thunder, the rain, the stars, the moon. They all worship God perfectly. Yeah. But one thing in creation didn't. And that was you. You didn't worship God perfectly. And neither did I. But that was the one thing that God wanted. And God loved us so much that he sent himself, his son, to die on a cross for us. Wow, how much love is that? That God had everything. He had the stars worship him. Literally bowed down to him. He had nebulas sing his praises. And yet it still wasn't good enough.
listen to this word. Come on. So I'm going to read it to you in verse 9 through 10. It says, my dear children, don't shut off God's discipline, but don't be crushed by it either. It's the child he loves that he disciplines. That child he embraces, he also corrects. God is educating you. That's why you must never drop out. He's treating you as dear children. This trouble you're in isn't punishment. It's training. The normal experience of children. Only irresponsible parents leave their children to fend for themselves. Would you prefer an irresponsible God? Wow, I love this scripture so much. It gets a little bigger. In the NIV, it's so incredible. It impacts my heart. When I hear it, though, my initial response is God is testing me. Yeah. He's giving me this situation because he's upset with me. Yeah. He wants to see if I love him enough, if I'm loyal enough. And I don't totally think to myself that I'm loved. But it's so incredible because when you actually dig into the scripture, what it's talking about is that God loves us so much that he gives us times that get to, to train us. Yeah. It's so awesome because the same love that you came in contact with when you studied the Bible is the same love that it gives you today. When you think back, when you studied the Bible, it was difficult. Yeah. It was hard. Some of us broke up with boyfriends. I had a fiance. Some of us, we, we changed our whole lives, quit jobs. We moved across the country. We were willing to do anything. We changed everything because we saw God's discipline in our lives. Sometimes that hardship, we don't feel like it's love anymore. Yeah. We don't feel like God is showing grace to us by doing that. Yeah. You know, the same love that sent Jesus to the earth, that died and died for our sins, he desperately wanted to be with us. Yeah. Desperately. That he gave up heaven to be with me. Yeah. And that same thing translates to today. He desperately wants to be with me. And so God puts me in situations where my heart is continually revealed. Right. Where I get to see the sin that's in my heart that's separating me from God. Come on, Recently, I had a day time. It was really awesome. I had day time with Salma and Matt and my husband. And it was an incredible day time. But what I was feeling, they were, it was awesome. You know, I'm learning a lot. I just got married. For all of those who are married, you know. That it is a learning curve. Uh-huh. You're, you're learning not only how to be married, but the person that you're married to, your roommates now, it's really awesome. <laughs> but I was learning a lot. Yeah. And so Matt and Salma were discipling our marriage, my life, my ministry, and I just started crying. I remember being in the deep time and feeling like, man, I'm doing my best. And I told Salma, I'm doing my best. I'm trying to be a good wife. I'm trying to do good in the ministry. I'm trying so hard. Someone looked at me. Oh my gosh. She looked at me and she's like, no one's saying you're not doing your best. And I was like, oh my goodness. What do you mean? I felt so like taken out. I wanted somebody to like give me a good hug and tell me I was doing my best. And like, that's good enough. Just go And that's not what God is saying in the scripture either. He's saying that you are doing your best, but I want you to do better. I want you to be better. I want you to be with me. I want you to be my daughter. I want you to be close to me. And I'm willing to put you through anything to get there. I love this scripture so much because it really taught me so much as I studied it out. That it's God's love that I can go to to be a new person. And in this time, I started to study out what they were discipling me on, and it brought me to Psalm 9, verse 18. Come on, Jerry. And for time's sake, I won't read it, but you can write it down. Come on. It says that we who are needy will not be forgotten. And I thought to myself, man, I'm really needy right now. (laughs) And I know some of you guys are very needy. Come on. And it's incredible because all of us are needy with God. And so what I decided is I'm going to study this out, and I'm going to pray. And I prayed so hard. I would spend nights. I would stay up in the living room. 
Taco Lake came out concerned. It was really awesome. But I would stay up praying. I would wake up early and pray. I read scriptures. I would go to the Greek. That's how I put this whole lesson together, literally. It, I went and I studied all about what God was trying to teach me so that I could be needy with him and that he could fulfill my needs. It was incredible because when I really saw where I was before God, I was so grateful that Salma didn't say, good job, that's it. But she said, you're doing your best, but I want you to be better. And I think about today, sisters, you know, some of us, we just got baptized last week, a week ago, like Kelly. Some of us, some of us have been around. I've been a disciple for going on 10 years. Some of you guys, 25. We're all facing different challenges. Yeah. And when we go through our first bump, we think, am I even a Christian? Oh, yeah. Did I even get the Holy Spirit? They might need to baptize me again. <laughs> some of you might be thinking, this challenge that I'm going through right now, it's just because I messed up. It's because I sinned somewhere. It's because God just, he's not with me anymore. And we start to think to ourselves, God, why are you so far away? Sisters, that's why you're in the situation. Yeah. Right. And when you accept that, no matter if the situation goes away or the circumstances change, yeah. when you accept it, you can rest in God's love and be renewed yeah. by it. Yeah. It's awesome because when you study the Bible, you got baptized, you get all the forgiveness of your sins, your life was completely different. Yeah. I remember going home and I was like, I don't feel like a jolt of energy, but I definitely feel like a different person. I, my whole life was changed, and I was so happy. And I knew there were so many hardships in front of me, but I was ready to go through them. Yeah. So sisters, I want to challenge you. If you're going through anything right now, I want you to, to pray. And the challenge is for everybody yeah. to have a good prayer every single day yeah. on what God is trying to teach you, and how is that going to bring you closer to God. Yeah. And then for those who are studying the Bible, Continue to study the Bible and then pray about who are you going to be on the other side of this, yeah. no matter how hard it gets, and be renewed by God's love. Thank you so much for being Like, super fired up, they're like, oh, I want to pay for the car behind me. How much is their order? And the cycle keeps 
going wow. and going and going. And you see the reaction of everybody. They're super fired up. They're like, yeah, I got a free copy. Kind of, because I'm paying for the person behind me. But I'm paying a good view for it. And I just love that because as disciples, we can think that, how can we pay it for? Yeah. But the yeah. awesome thing about God in the Bible is that when he created us and we became disciples, we get to go out and do what? Share our faith. Yeah. And so that's us paying it for it. That's us being a part yeah. of, not just us accepting yeah. God's gift, but going out and bringing it to other people. Yeah. And I know you're thinking, well, what does that have to do with serving? <laughs> what does that have to do with the concept of serving? But it has to do a lot with it. Because when we become disciples and we lay down everything, we don't just stop there. We don't just sit at church service today and just expect to give, uh, to receive, but we have to give. Yeah. And so the title of my, my little one point is Save to Serve. And it's awesome because the definition of serving others is to make space for their existence and seeing them as valuable and worthy. Wow. So you're not just awesome. looking at someone and doing a good deed, but you're actually looking at a person and you're like, I value you. You're special. I'm going to make time for you. You're important to me. And it's awesome because we have the, the greatest example ever, right? We have Jesus himself who leaves us, has a, who leaves us the example. What did Jesus do? He went around and preached from town to town. Yeah. Even to the point of exhaustion when he had to pray to renew his strength. He fed hungry crowds of people that just chased him because they seen the miracles he was performing. He healed the sick. He raised people from the dead. And he yeah. also washed his disciples' feet. The men who were walking with him, he decided to serve them in that way. And they called us now to do the same thing to those around us. Right. But ultimately, Jesus still serves us today through his death. Because of Jesus' death, we're able to sit here today and have women who are refreshed, who are renewed, who have the Holy Spirit, and who can go out into the world and do amazing things. And this made me think of a scripture in 1 Peter chapter 4. We can turn there. In verse 10, it says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as a faithful servant of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do it as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. And I love this scripture because it calls us to use our talents to give God glory. Yeah. And I know for me, when I first became a disciple, I was introverted. I'm shy. I sat in the back of the church. I was like, don't talk to me. I'm Come scared on. to take my yeah. little notes and then go to in and out after church. And I was yeah. it. But then my disciple was like, hey, you should probably do something. Do something greater. Yeah. And so it made me think about the ways that I can actually serve. And it's awesome because we have new Christians orientation and we get presented with the different ways, but I'm going to go back over them for us. It's awesome on Sunday services, when you walk through those front doors, who do you see? Usher. Usher, right? And I love the Usher so much. Because sometimes I come to church a little anxious. I don't know about you guys. I'm like, it's a lot of people. i got to give a lot of hugs, talk to people, and give my heart. But seeing the smiles of the disciples yeah. at the front door really changes my perspective. I see them handing out communion cups, which is telling me, hey, i got to remember reminisce on the things that God has given me. I see them handing out the, the little control envelopes. I'm like, yeah, I need to give it God. <laughs> you know, but their servitude is reminding me of all the good things that I have. Um, and then also, it's the hugs. Yeah. At the front door, right when you walk in, it's Camille being tapped on her shoulder, my daughter, um, by her brother, is trying to get her to smile and be warm. That's the, that's the encouragement from the usher. There's also song leading. Yeah. I can't sing, but Kiana can. <laughs> I can't sing, but Jill can. And so it's the encouragement that we get from seeing people up here singing and worshiping God. We have our AV, the audio oh, yeah. like that. We have our kids, Kingdom Workers, who serve hard. And I'm very grateful for kids, Kingdom, because it allows our kids to go in the room with other kids, fellowship. But then it allows the parents to come in here and fellowship and give their hearts to each other. We have counters. Which is a very important role in the church. It's trustworthy disciples who do miss a portion of service, but then they 
go and count the money to make sure that the money is properly handled and stored. Yeah. So your contribution isn't just going into somebody's bank account, but it's actually being accounted for and it's being right. distributed according to the needs of the church. Yeah. I think of all the sisters that babysit for all the parents out yeah. there. Yeah. And it means so much to the parents. Yeah. It means so much to have someone who you trust, someone who's reliable, someone who you know is going to take care of your kid. Yeah. Watch your kid while you're in a Bible study. Or watch your kid while you go out on a date. Yeah. It's awesome. It's encouraging the family that we have um, through things like that. And a great uh, group of people that we have, which is very special in my heart now, is our social media yeah. team that we have. And I just want to lift up all the things that work so hard in that group, like Allie, we have TJ, we have Taylor, we have Faye.
daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. Whoever loses their life for me will save it. Jesus taught that in order to follow him, in this life, we must be willing to lose our life in order to save it. Meaning we must be willing to deny ourselves, do what we have to do, even when we don't want to do it. A great prophet, Eminem once said, as he wrote the song, Lose Yourself, he wrote about the fear and anxiety of facing his purpose. What he called, what he believed he was called and created to do. A once in a lifetime moment. And overcoming it by losing himself in the music and in the moment. And just letting go. We too as disciples can fear facing some of our greatest moments. Once in a lifetime moments. Where we're called to lose ourselves. Not in the music but in living out the word of God. In the moments where we have to do what we were created to do when it's time to preach the word. I'm so grateful to be able to preach to you all this evening. Are you guys still awake? And I'm so grateful because of benevolence. Honestly, hearing everyone's prayer requests and hearing about people losing their families and their moms and their dads and their, their god moms. And it reminds me, it, it helps me realize that every day we walk past someone's potential once in a lifetime moment. And if it was our family members with limited time left, we would hope that if a disciple was near, they would share their faith. And so just as Eminem said, my goal today is to help you to let go and face your fears. Tonight, I hope to convince you to let go, lose yourself in the word of God, and renew your faith. The title of my lesson today is Renewed by the Lost. Point number one is renewal through protecting your faith. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 4. Verse Come on. Three. 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 So Proverbs 4.23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. And many of us are probably very familiar with this scripture. Most of the time, we're talking about an interest, and our disciples are saying, guard your heart. And we're like, okay, I'm going to guard my heart. But what does it actually mean? In the ESV version, it says, keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flows the springs of life. And so guard, if you go back to the Hebrew, it means to protect or to create a boundary. Yeah. And so it's teaching us to keep boundaries around your heart. For yeah. from it flows the springs of life. Yeah. That word life in the Hebrew is kani, meaning living, renewing, freshness. Wow. So your refreshment, it comes from your heart and God says you must protect it. Wow. Uh, this gave me a whole new perspective of what it means to guard your heart. Right. What would it look like if you allowed fear and anxiety and doubt in your heart? Wow. What would it produce? Oh, okay. Spiritual weeds. Okay. Yeah. Fears and doubts that can get in the way of you seeing the, the harvest that God is trying to bloom in your life. And so ladies, I want to call you guard your heart by tending your garden. Yeah. Every morning. Yeah. Here we are. I want to challenge you guys with the joy prayer. Yeah. Praying through Jesus, others, and then yourself. Yeah. When you pray about Jesus, it reminds you of who you talk to, our great and loving God, which yeah. Haley shared so powerfully about. Right. When you share about others and the kingdom, it reminds you of who you serve and who serves you all week long. But because Women's Day is coming up, I want us to create a list of women as our others. Yeah. Think through the, the benevolent prayers, guys. Write them down. Yeah. And pray through those women. Pray that they get their once in a lifetime moment. Wow. Because I'll tell you, by the you, if you do this, by the time you get to yourself, you start thinking, man, my life is pretty good. Yeah. And you actually feel renewed. Wow. You actually feel like, wow, like there's so many other people with so many greater needs. Yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. You, you start to think, like, God, I'm good. Thank you. Yeah. And so I want to challenge you guys 
with the joy of prayer. Point number two, renewal through planting now and harvesting later. So the part of the rap that Eminem has said that you didn't get to hear, I'm going to rap it, but it says, his palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. He's nervous, but on the surface he's look calm and ready to drop bombs, but he keeps on forgetting when he looks down, the whole crowd goes so loud. He opens his mouth, but the words won't come. Produces 
his grain. First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. Here, the man focuses on scattering uh, the seed, which is the same thing as us sharing our faith. But sometimes I think we share our faith and we come back to our disciple and we're like, look, I share my faith on Monday. Nobody's getting baptized. Yeah. And it's Wednesday. Okay. Here's the thing. It's like, oh, well, okay, let's figure it out. How many times did you share your faith? Yeah. That one time. Right. Okay. Here's the thing. If you know anything about gardening, you yeah. never plant a seed and just wait and watch. You right. have to plant many yeah. seeds. And here's how you know that the Bible works. Come on. There's a sister, Carmen, who was reached out to in 2021 in Santa Cruz. She studied the Bible for like a week or two and fell off. A month later, she was met out by a sister named Justice Owa. She studied the Bible again for two weeks. She falls off. Then she goes to the mall. Three weeks later, Giovanni Washington invites her to come to church. She goes to a, uh, uh, what do you call it? a congregational service and realizes every single person who reached out to her, they all went to the same church. And she goes, wow, I got to study the Bible. But imagine how many knows those disciples heard. But it was about planting the seed. We will be renewed by the loss as we renew the loss. Thank you.